Thornbridge Manor. This is a private area, sir. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer, the famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. A famous private investigator some... Anything, but I'm so relieved you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary. Then, and all this security. I've never seen a place guarded like this, and, and and I dare say I don't like it at all. Seven, event, moving in to investigate. And the woman isn't even dead. Too bad we're not about to tell them we'll make a great story of the pub tonight. Considering the fact that I spotted no less than two roots to get inside the house, I'm saying, you know what we're doing, so don't worry about that. Come on, nothing here. Standing by to stand by. Over. Lost visual on target, Delta. Move to last known position. Calling in. Calling in. Someone's causing trouble. Is he some kind of Houdini? Get out of our way, okay? Okay, okay. Nothing at my position. Get ready. We've got trouble. Listen here, pal. I'm sorry, but you ain't coming through here. on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution, handled with absolute discretion. I have yet to see a mystery I haven't solved. And I don't give a toss about my fame, if that's what you're worried about. My lips are sealed. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. You assume too much, Madame Carlyle. The crime scene, if such exists, is never where I begin. Do as you wish. However, I expect a result in a timely fashion. Fernsby will take over from here. I'm Mr. Fernsby of the Butler. I will try to assist you as best I can. Where would you like to start your investigation, sir? Where's the family? I like to prime the suspects a bit. Madame Carlyle's family members are all on this floor. 
Maybe start in the city. If you'll follow me. This way. Climbing, you say? That sounds interesting. It's like planting seeds that will grow into telling actions or words. I see. Any such seeds will be before I even do it. I already have. And fruit they bear. You are bold, not easily faced, self-controlled and always a step ahead. All qualities a murderer would benefit from, wouldn't you say? I wouldn't know, I'm afraid. If that is all, sir, please do come and find me when you feel ready to inspect the crime scene. Just one question. Is that burned leather I can smell on you? Unusual for a butler. To burn leather. I don't I, I don't know what you what you seeds. Mr. Fernsby. Seeds. My heart with that piano. I can feel the hair on my neck stand. Quite the poet. But you're right. It's beautiful. Tango has vanished. C2, this is Alpha 4 Actual. Over. Something bad's going down. You need to look at it. Jesus H. Christ! Please help! Help me! Oh my god! Please help me! <laughs> What's going on? Some guy is being a nuisance to everyone. We need to stop him. Don't worry, I'm on it. Roger Command, Wilco. But he was such a gentleman. He gave me his coat and all. If you're dressed like a Detective 47, you might as well act the detective. I suggest you go talk to the butler. Mr. Fernsby, I'm ready to see the crime scene. Very well, Mr. Whitman. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that the staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual Agreed, situation. Sir. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you. 
So please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. You are standing A locked very... room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body? 47. Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. A hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm, a photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. That means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I've prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Gregory Carlyle, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Oh, you're wondering about my alibi, Mr. Detective. Well, um, I left Thornbridge around half eight for a pint with Edward. I wish I hadn't. <laughs> Quiz night at the inn. On the other hand, staying here with Zachary, my obnoxious sister, and the wife sporting another one of her headaches would have been a fate worse than death. <laughs> uh, the, the short of it, uh, Zachary was very much alive when we left. I stayed for the last shout, and I was back here just before midnight. Anything else you want to pry from my intricate intellect? Emma Carla, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know?
Hello there, sir. Days like that, I bet you work with a lot. Maybe I should get we back should to get back to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That door leads to Emma and Greg. Bree's room. What is this? Who are you? Hey! Hey! Why aren't you listening to me? Are you deaf or something? A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? Now this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. The plot thickens. How are you? Aaron Ford Jr. calling from Morgan, Yates, and Cohn. I need to get a listing of asset transfers from the Carlisle account, HTC Depot number 5085. This all confirms that Arthur Edwards stole everything from Madame Carlisle. Perhaps you should let her know how bad it is, 47. This is Rebecca's room. I can see from the log 
that Rebecca was in a conference call from 9 p.m. to midnight last night. No need to panic. Ah! What's happened to you? Dead. No. That's Madame Carlyle taken care of. Time to get the file on Arthur Edwards. You don't have the right clearance, mister. Please, don't waste my time. Man, there's some kind of commotion down here. I'm having a look around. Ah, <sighs> could you be any more annoying? Looking good, good today, sir. look like Zachary. I've never seen a dead body before. It must have been awful. Do you think it was a suicide? I don't know. Madame Carlyle certainly doesn't think so. Why else would she have asked that detective to come here? For murder? Was the blood? Not that I
Do me a fit. You need to tr Peculiar icons above the safe. I wonder if they might be some sort of a code. Maybe have a look around the office, 47. Mission complete. Well done, 47. Seven. They're everywhere. Go, get out! It's the Constantine! Shit! <laughs> 